Hello and welcome to my bio. Today's video is about one of the gene regulation classics, the tryptophan operon and its regulation by attenuation. And as always, described in under 15 minutes. So let's start. So what is attenuation? Attenuation, or to be more precise transcription attenuation, is a gene regulation mechanism in bacteria. It was already described in 1977, so over 40 years ago, and since it was one of the most impactful examples of gene regulation mechanism in bacteria, we still find the example of attenuation basically in every biological textbook you read at school or university. Attenuation acts on post-transcriptional level, which means it's not directly targeting DNA on DNA level, but in contrast, it's regulating on RNA level. But remember, since transcription and translation is coupled in bacteria, many things are happening at the same time. When you read about attenuation, you mostly read about the example of the tryptophan operon in E. coli. Since here attenuation was discovered, until now it's the prime model of transcription attenuation. But just keep in mind, it's just an example and attenuation actually regulates tryptophan biosynthesis in many bacteria and not only E. coli. Attenuation is not only restricted to tryptophan biosynthesis, instead these attenuators can be found in front of different operons, but mostly they regulate genes of amino acid synthesis. The tryptophan operon in E. coli consists of five genes, the so-called trip genes. They are named trip E, D, C, B and A. These genes are transcribed into messenger RNA or mRNA and moreover they are translated into five proteins responsible for the synthesis of tryptophan. Tryptophan is an essential amino acid not just for E. coli or bacteria but for all life on this planet. It is an essential building block in biosynthesis of many proteins, often playing a key role in the structure of these proteins. Even for us humans, it is used for the production of the happiness hormone serotonin and the sleeping hormone melatonin. Ok, taken together tryptophan is quite important for bacteria. On the other hand, it is also quite expensive to synthesize. Actually it is the amino acid with the highest energy cost to synthesize and that is why tryptophan synthesis needs such a tight regulation. Since a bacterial cell does not want to waste energy to synthesize this very expensive amino acid when it is already there in very high cellular amounts. Ok, so let us look how tryptophan production is regulated in bacteria by taking the E. coli operon as an example. Due to the importance of efficient tryptophan production, this operon is regulated by two different mechanisms. Firstly, a tryptophan repressor and secondly, the already mentioned attenuation. So let's start with the tryptophan repressor. The tryptophan repressor regulates this operon on transcriptional level, so DNA level. For this, two DNA segments in front or upstream of the tryptophan genes are of great importance. Of course, we have the promoter, a sequence of DNA which the RNA polymerase enzyme recognizes to initiate transcription. And then we have the operator, a DNA segment at which a repressor can bind. And this binding happens under high tryptophan conditions, because then tryptophan is binding the repressor, leading to a conformational change and now the repressor is able to bind DNA at the operator. So now the repressor basically acts as a roadblock and RNA polymerase cannot dock onto the promoter region and therefore the tryptophan genes cannot be transcribed. So the tryptophan repressor is the first layer of tryptophan biosynthesis regulation. The second mechanism regulating tryptophan synthesis is attenuation on which we will focus now. For transcription attenuation, a third DNA sequence in front of the tryptophan genes is of great importance. This sequence is called the leader sequence. This leader sequence is also containing a small open reading frame, so a coding region for a small protein or better named peptide. So that means that the leader sequence is first transcribed into an RNA which is called attenuator RNA and later translated 
into a leader peptide. When we take a closer look at this open reading frame, we can see that there is a characteristic feature of this coding region. Namely, we have two tryptophan codons in a row. These are called consecutive tryptophan codons or tandem codons. And these consecutive or tandem codons are so important because they are heavily influencing the translation speed of this leader sequence. So when RNA polymerase starts to transcribe the leader sequence, you can see how the RNA is arising. Since transcription and translation are coupled in bacteria, the ribosome docks at the RNA already starting to translate into the leader peptide while the leader sequence is still transcribed. At some point of translation, the ribosome reaches the two consecutive codons of the attenuator RNA, and that's the essential step for attenuation, because here the cell has to deliver two tryptophan loaded tRNAs in a row, because we have two tryptophan codons right after each other. And from here, we basically have two possibilities. First, let's look at tryptophan sufficiency. So we have high tryptophan conditions in the cell which means that there is already enough tryptophan and the cell wants to avoid to produce even more to save energy. So when the ribosome reaches the consecutive tryptophan codon, it's actually no problem for the cell to deliver even two tryptophan in a very short time. So in general, due to high levels of tryptophan, translation of the leader sequence is happening very fast. But what happens under high tryptophan conditions and fast translation is that some parts of the attenuator RNA starting to fold into each other until they form this hairpin structure you can see here. This is achieved since some parts of the attenuator RNA can bind each other and this hairpin structure is also called a terminator structure since the ribosome cannot pass this structure to continue translation and with translation stopped also transcription is terminated. So that means under high levels of tryptophan Yes, the leader sequence is transcribed and even translated, but due to termination of transcription, none of the downstream tryptophan genes are transcribed. And this, of course, prevents tryptophan production under high levels of tryptophan. So under high levels of tryptophan, we have no transcription of the tryptophan genes. On the other hand, under tryptophan insufficiency, so when tryptophan levels are low, the cells, of course, want to synthesize tryptophan and therefore need transcription of the tryptophan genes. In general, this is ensured by a slower and less efficient translation of the tryptophan leader sequence. So what happens is when the ribosome reaches the tandem tryptophan codons on the attenuator RNA under low levels of tryptophan, the ribosome actually pauses. This is also called ribosome stalling. This pausing or stalling of the ribosome at the two tryptophan codons is due to low levels of tryptophan, since this also means that there are low levels of tRNAs loaded with tryptophan. So simply, it needs some time to deliver two tryptophan loaded tRNAs under low tryptophan conditions. And this stalling of the ribosome influences the structure of the attenuator RNA. While under high levels of tryptophan, in fast translation, a terminator is formed. Now, under low levels of tryptophan, in slow translation, instead an anti-terminator is formed. This is another exclusive secondary structure of the attenuator RNA. And you already guessed it, the anti-terminator is not terminating transcription. Instead, after some time, the two tryptophan loaded tRNAs are delivered to the ribosome and translation continues. But not only translation, due to preventing of the terminator structure, also transcription continues, and the RNA polymerase reaches the downstream tryptophan genes, and with this ensures tryptophan production when it's needed. Okay, so let's sum up the most important parts. Under high levels of tryptophan, Obviously, the cell does not want to synthesize even more tryptophan, because this would be a waste of energy. In contrast, under low levels of tryptophan, the cells of course want to synthesize tryptophan, as it is an important prick of cellular life. High levels of tryptophan are leading to a fast translation of the leader sequence, and even when the ribosome reaches the consecutive tryptophan codons, it's no problem 
to deliver even two tryptophan loaded tRNAs in a row. In contrast, under low levels of tryptophan, the ribosome pauses at the consecutive tryptophan codons before continuing translation. Depending on the speed in which the leader sequence is translated due to different tryptophan levels, the two exclusive secondary structures of the atonate RNAs are formed. Under high levels of tryptophan, the leader forms a terminator structure, while under low levels of tryptophan, due to ribosome stalling, the antiterminator structure is formed. Depending on which secondary structure is formed, it influences if the downstream tryptophan genes are transcribed or not, because when the terminator is formed, it's leading to a termination of transcription, even before the tryptophan genes are transcribed. While under low levels of tryptophan, due to the antiterminator structure, we don't have a termination before the tryptophan genes, and instead they are transcribed to ensure tryptophan synthesis. And that's it for today. Transcription attenuation described with the tryptophan operon in E. coli, in under 15 minutes. If you like the video and you want to support this channel, please click the subscribe button. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter or Facebook. And anyways, see you soon in the fantastic life of microbiology. Bye.